Good afternoon and welcome uh, to our basement again, uh, where today we are going to be talking about how to build a coil pot. If you did not check out our previous video about how to set up your own home work area or studio, please check that out before watching this one. It'll be a great deal of help. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I have my co-host here with me, my daughter, Anna, and my name is Chris. So in the video last week, we talked about how Anna was working on this coil pot here. And today we're gonna to show you how to get started on this. She's uh, spent several days on this, so hers is pretty big. I'm gonna show you how to make a little bit smaller one for those of you who are unfamiliar with this. It's a little bit easier to start with something small. So the first thing we need to do is build up a base. And this base here is just made out of a flat piece of clay uh, that we call in the pottery world a slab. So the first thing we need to do, I'm gonna set this aside, is get some clay out. We have some clay here, and I want you to show everybody how to remove a small piece of clay from this using this wire tool. So using this wire tool, you, uh, you just put it right in the center. Well, depending on how much you're going to do, I'm just going to do about a quarter of it or a third. And you basically kind of just hold down on this and pull up. Easy as that. Perfect. And if you don't have one of these wire tools, if you did not get one from the Potter Center, you can use fishing line. So now what we need to do is flatten this piece of clay. What I do is I place one hand over the top and I start to push down like this. And I'll rotate it, push down, rotate it, push down. Now that gets it fairly flat, but not where, enough to where we need it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up and start to throw it at an angle. And the way I do this is I take my hands just like this with my thumbs pointed down, pretend that I'm, it's like a duck quacking, and I pick this up and I throw it at an angle towards me. So I'm gonna bring it towards me when I do this. And this is going to stretch it out. And I kind of rotate it around. And it gets bigger and bigger. Now, if I say I want a certain shape, this is pretty round and we will cut this to make it uh, a little bit nicer shape here in a second. But this is pretty round. So uh, say I wanted to lengthen it just maybe this way, I would just throw it at that one angle like this. And we don't want to get it too thin. So only about this thin is all we want it. If you guys can see that there, that's how thin it is. And then we are going to cut out our base shape. I'm going to use my needle tool here that I showed you in the last video, but a dull kitchen steak knife will work just as well. So I'm gonna make up the shape. You can do round if you want, um, but I'm gonna do something a little different. So I'm just gonna make, what shape am I gonna make here? Something a little bit more interesting, but not too complicated. And you can just freehand it. So I cut through that and I remove this excess clay and now I have this shape. So we'll start building a coil pot with this shape. Now what I can do is I can take my excess clay and I, you can use this for building our first coil. Any clay that you have that you're not using, it will dry out if you leave it open. So we do not want to leave it uncovered. So I'm going to put this back in the plastic bag that came in. Cover that up really well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to take my excess clay and I'm just going to pound it into a baseball shape like this. And spend a little bit of time doing this, just like so. Split this in half. Get this into this shape, Anna. Um, I'm going to just take my palm and just like this, see I'm rotating it around and I'm not, I'm not pushing too hard, just little bits at a time. Once you get it to about this size, we can start the rolling process. I'm gonna place this on my canvas board. If you don't have a canvas board, just a regular wooden board will work, or 
um, some newspaper, maybe bigger than this, um, taped down to the table. So as basically as soft as you can, just kind of roll like this. Not like this though. Not too fast, right? Yeah. Just kind of slow. Just kind of slow, steady, so you don't really make any mistakes. And then it'll gradually get longer and longer and longer and longer. Okay, so she's making pretty good progress. You see how it's pretty nice and even. Press a little bit harder. And the goal is to keep it nice and round. Sometimes it'll start to flop around when you do this and it'll, because it'll flatten out. And if that happens, all I recommend doing, like right here, it's hard to see probably, it's starting to flatten out. Sometimes it'll do that over the whole thing. What I do is I just take and I just kind of pinch right there, wherever it's flattening out and just round it out. But spend your time with this. And after a while, we'll have a nice long coil. Now, I would say this coil is about the thickness of one of my fingers, so that one will work. I'll do this one really quick, and then we'll get started attaching them. Okay, so now you can see I got two coils that I can use, and now what I'm going to do is attach these to my base. When I attach them to the base, the first thing I'm going to do is rough up the base. I'm going to use this serrated rib tool that I talked about. If you don't have one of these, a fork will work just fine. But I'm going to scratch up all the edges where the two pieces of clay are going to join together. So that's all along the outside of this slab. So I've roughed this up like this. See how that works? I don't need to do this area because the slab is going to, or the coil is going to go around the outside. Notice I did, I am not attaching the coil around the outside of the slab. I'm going to attach it on the top. Now what you're going to do is do the same thing to your first coil, just like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of water. I have a bowl right here full of water. And I'm gonna take my sponge, just get a little bit of water on there and just kind of gently dampen this. My goal is not to make a big mess, just to put a tiny bit of water, not completely saturate and drown this slab. Can you see that little bit of water? Now this water is going to help the clay stick together. And then I'm going to stick this on there like this. So if you can follow me, I'm gonna to try to keep my hands out of the way. I'm just going to attach like this. I'm just gonna go all the, around, all the way around very carefully. Here, when I get to the edge, uh, the, the, the other end of the coil, I'm going to just build this up and start putting it on top, okay? Now I'm ready for my second coil, like this. So I'm just gonna again go all the way around and start to attach this. So I go all the way around like so, okay? So now I've attached two coils and I will smear these out here in a little bit. But before I do that, I think it's okay. The clay is still, the, the pot is still pretty short and the clay is strong enough to where I can add probably two or three more of those coils before I start to blend these coils together. So now I, we've added a few more coils in the same exact method. And so we have about five or six stacked up here. So now we are ready to start joining these pieces of clay together. So I'm gonna use my smearing tool here, and this is important. So when attaching two pieces of clay together or multiple pieces of clay together, like all these coils, it's important that we do that wet, rough, and smear process. So we wanna wet it up with a little bit of water. We wanna rough it up with one of these uh, serrated ribs or your fork. And then we wanna smear it all together really well with our wooden tool or 
our the end of a fork that I put tape on, remember. And this is important to do this very, very well and spend some time doing. So you might spend days and hours working on a certain piece only to find out later, if you don't do these steps well, that it breaks apart in the firing and then your work is lost. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take this tool here and I'm just gonna gently start smearing all this together. Notice I'm smearing down and sometimes to a diagonal rather than up. We do not want to smear up because smearing up is going to pull the coils apart and we want to push them together. I'm doing this very slowly and carefully and getting them all together. So there's one time around and then I would go over it a second time. And when I go over it the second time, I'll probably go over it kind of in the opposite direction and a little bit diagonal, and then I'll smear all these lines together even more. Okay, so I've gone around it, but you see here that I have all this clay on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this part of my tool, the sharp end of my tool. You can also use your needle tool to do this or your kitchen knife. And I'm just going to cut all that away back to our original shape. Might run my needle tool underneath here. And then this clay is still nice and soft and it's usable. So I'm going to put this back in the bag like so. Now we've done that. And I'm going to show you the inside. The outside, all the coils are smeared together, but the inside, if you can see it, is not. So this can be difficult to get your tool in and make it go down. So what I recommend is using your fingers to do it. Also, if you're using your fingertips, you're gonna want to kind of gently push your fingers on the other side while you're doing it, so you don't entirely push it out. And so it just stays in its shape. Good point, Anna. I failed to mention that. You definitely want to have your hand supporting the opposite side so that the clay doesn't collapse inward or outward. And now what we're going to do is start to work on thinning these walls up and making them a little bit taller. So what I do is, remember when we rolled out the, when we made the slab and I used my duck hands in the duck sheet? And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently pinch the clay together and pinch up in a spot and then go to the next spot and the next spot. And I'm just pinching fairly gently and trying to make it a little bit thinner. See how that automatically raises that up quite a bit taller. At this point, we're not too worried about the shape. We don't want it to get really bent and mangled looking. But we're going to do a lot of refining of this shape later. Right now, we're just trying to get the basic structure down. So I'm going to pinch. I'm going to do this all the way around. I can use both hands or I can just use one. Now, when I'm doing this, I don't want to make the rim too thin because we want to be able to add more coils on top of this later once this form has dried out a little bit. So now the clay is much thinner and it doesn't have much support right now because of how wet it is. You can see how easily I can move this. So this right now is at a stopping point as far as being able to build it up and go up. We'll work on, so we'll let it dry out a little bit and then later once it's stiffened up a little bit, we will add some more coils. But we can do some refining right now. You remember my rib tool that I love so much that I can't do without, or your homemade one that I made out of a coffee can lid? I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna take the rounded edge side, and I'm just going to support it on the inside with my hand so it doesn't collapse, and I'm just going to start to rub it like this. And this is gonna get rid of all of our tool marks and fingerprint marks for the most part. 
We'll continue to do this more and more as we go. I'm just gonna go around the whole pot here, again, using this rounded edge, not the straight side, the rounded edge. You'll learn a little bit about how to bend this tool to get in and out of certain curves of this pot and to be able to smooth it. Again, supporting it on the inside with my hand. Okay, so that's looking much better. It's a little bit smoother. Now, the final thing I do before I put this away is I want to make sure this rim is thick enough that we can add another coil later. Right now, you can see it's pretty darn thin, much thinner than the coils we need because of the way we pinched it. So I'm gonna take my paddle here, and I'm just gonna gently, not hard, just gently flatten this out a little bit and make it a little bit thicker. Don't worry if the top is uneven in height. We will fix that later at the end of the process. But for right now, we just want to have a nice, fairly flat and a little bit thicker surface like this to be able to add on our next coil. So now what I'll do is I'll let this dry for probably a few hours and then I will come back. Okay, to so it. Anna and I left this piece of pottery out for a good six to eight hours and it has really started to dry out. It is at the leather hard stage. When I say leather hard, that's a pottery term we use to mean that it has stiffened up enough that it holds its shape when we pick it up, but it's soft enough that we can remove clay if we want to and we can add clay later if we'd like to. It kind of has the feeling of leather, hence the name leather hard. So we are going to work on this probably tomorrow, but in the meantime, we do not want it to dry out any further. It's at the perfect stage for adding more coils. So Anna, why don't you show our viewers what they do with the garbage bag to keep it from drying out? So you'll take your garbage bag, and first you just want to set this aside really quick. And you just gotta lay it out in front of you so it'll be the opening will be facing you. And then you'll just put your coil pot inside. And then what you're, next you're going to do is you're just going to start putting the excess garbage can inside like this. So it's all stuffed inside and, and it keeps the thing not drying. Great. So this will be ready for us tomorrow. It won't have dried out at all and since Anna did a good job wrapping it up and we'll be ready to work on it then. And so stay tuned for our next video. Uh, where we will refine this shape, make it bigger, and do a lot of fun stuff. See you all next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.